The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elisha, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are, the, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on, on earth shall be bound in heaven, Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is a special feast in the, the church called the, the, the Feast of the Chair of Peter. The Chair of Peter is recognized because Jesus placed his trust and his authority in the hands of St. Peter. And this confession that he makes, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, this confession he makes reveals that somehow the, the father put these words in Peter's mouth and it became the way that Jesus would recognize and see the cooperation with his father that Peter needed to be the one who would be the leader of this church. I will give you the keys of the kingdom, which you bind and loose on earth is so in heaven. This is what he said. And so the power of, this is what we call the power of the keys, the keys to heaven, as you, we could say. It designates an authority for Peter to, to govern. It designates an authority to bind and loose things and have a charge in the church for the sake of the church. Jesus confirmed this in his mandate of St. John in chapter 21. Peter, feed my sheep. Jesus literally commissioned Peter to take this role and authority so that the flock could be cared for. Jesus' mandate included the power to bind and loose. In other words, to say what sin could be forgiven and what sin could not be forgiven. And the fact that it can happen, imagine that, the authority to forgive sins. Because in the Old Testament, they believed that only God could do that. But now God, working through the sacramental ministry of the priest, has the authority to do this, to give the forgiveness of sins under the authority of Peter. Also, this authority includes making doctrinal decisions and judgments, disciplinary actions in the church. And so Jesus entrusted this type of authority to the apostles, and with the apostles, Peter, seen as the first pope, is revealed to not be working alone, a leader of the apostles, but not working without college, uh, not working out without collaboration from the brother apostles. And so, the ter the term of something we call infallibility comes up here. Infallibility means, in other words, when a doctrine is pronounced 
and agreed upon by the Pope and the apostles, it's infallible. In other words, it's a non-negotiable in our faith. There's, very, there's not a lot of these non-negotiables in the faith, but there are enough to make us understand that this is not a dictatorship. The Pope is working with the apostles, which would be the modern-day bishops. The Pope works with the apostles in what's called the magisterium. Their collective together becomes a discerning body and a body that governs with the Pope as its head. The Pope with the magisterium preserves God's people from deviation and defection from the truth of the gospel and the truths of the faith. But again, I have to underline, the Pope is not a dictator. You can see some of that in, we just celebrated yesterday the feast of Peter, St. Peter Damien. He was, around in, uh, he was around in 1072. He became the whistleblower on all the corruption in the church at that time. And there's a book published about his endeavor to preserve the beauty of the church. It's called Gomorrah, if you ever want to get around to reading it. It's not a very long book, but it describes the corruption that was in the church at the time in a quite frank manner. And let's just put it this way. When we look at some of corruption that we might see in the church today, nothing is new. However, the church always rises above these things. And with Peter Damien, he assisted in what was called the Gregorian reform. The church was literally purged of all this insanity that was going on at, at, her t at that time. And Peter Damien is one of the heroes of this endeavor. In other words, God always supplies, always supplies the, the, the beauty and the dignity of the faith to make it true and real. So sometimes a person might possibly have issues with the way the Pope operates. However, because of the magisterium, these things take, get taken care of in their time. And often, filtering through difficulties with popes, which Peter Damien saw himself, and bishops that Peter Damien saw himself, with time, these things become healed and the truth is revealed and the church continues to go on. And so th this is all because the Holy Spirit is guiding and leading our church. And with the magisterium, the Pope constantly is assisted with the proper people and the discernment and the power of the Holy Spirit to keep our church on a true and worthy course. Regina Jenny, Leta Re, Alleluia, Qui Aque Menu Isti Portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit Sicut Dixit, Alleluia, Ora Pro Nobis Deum, Alleluia,